How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. be all, the proprietor asks. Even a rock climber could You catch sight of figures you are pretty sure are Ivory Order disciples standing at the door to the mausoleum. Let us through, you say. But something isn't right. Trespassers will be disposed of on orders of Master Sherwin. Kill, they murmur dispassionately, and then attack.
lucky. It seems the Ivory Order disciples have come back to themselves. Their faces are blank. Apparently, they don't recall anything after Sherwin ordered them to guard the door. Could he have hypnotized them? The Ivory Order disciples are gone. sense something strange about this place. I wouldn't be surprised if it's ghosts, considering where we are. You can hardly make out your surroundings in the dim. You'd best watch your step. Covered in spikes. Looks like a trap meant to deter trespassers.
church. An ivory order disciple stands in your way. Something strange about this one, too. This is as far as you will get. Unlike the lower level, the lights are lit. Someone's been here. Another Ivory Order disciple blocks your path. Trespassers will be disposed of. Yet another ivory impasse. How many of them are there in here? On the orders of Master Sherwin.
felt like that knight wanted to stop you from going any further. The sign reads, there is more here than meets the eye. Why not check the wall around here? Would you look at that? A secret passage. This must be what that sign was talking about. secret passage. This is definitely what that sign was hinting at. Be sure to keep an eye out in case there are more. Another secret passage. They sure make it easy to get lost in this place. You see a disciple of the Ivory Order. I'm sick and tired of this, she says, even as she storms toward you, weapon drawn. Don't hold back.
trembling all over, the Ivory Order disciple stumbles away on unsteady legs. Yet another secret passage. How many of these things are there? Put a secret passage here? Whoever built this place was seriously twisted. Figures there'd be a secret passage here, too. Go on and see where it leads. Another secret passage. I've lost count of how many you've found, but hopefully, this is the last of them. You sense an extraordinary presence ahead. You'd best not proceed unprepared. Welcome. One hundred gold pieces will get you wherever you're headed, the master says as you set foot in the carriage shop. You will be instantly transported to any location you've previously visited. Travel for one hundred gold pieces?
sense an immense power enshrouding the whole of this floor.
The Ivory Order trio lies collapsed at Sherwin's feet. Sherwin glances your way as he notices your presence. You again. What are you after, you ask him? This is the heart of the mausoleum, where the Order kept the dragon prisoner and harvested dragon tear. The Order perfected a technique to distill medicine from the preternatural magic imbued in dragon tear. So you were right in thinking you could find Mars cure here. Sherwin pays you no mind, continuing. How I detested that medicine. It took my parents from me. You struggled to conceal your shock that you and Sherwin suffered the same tragedy. Nursing his grudge, he infiltrated the Order so that he could destroy it from the inside out. After being elevated to the Order's highest echelons, he learned the dragon was the source of the medicine. Ever since, he had been awaiting his chance to kill the dragon. He finally got it atop the volcano. Now all that's left is to destroy this forsaken place, and the realm will be restored to how it was before the medicine, to how it ought to be. Sherwin stands before the altar and begins mumbling an incantation. It looks like he's gearing up to perform some sort of rite. The mausoleum will be destroyed if you don't stop Sherwin. And if that happens, you'll never get your hands on any dragon tear. Ah, uh, prepare yourself. The Ivory Order trio are still alive but don't have the strength to get up. You attempt to stop Sherwin's right. But the fallen Ivory Order trio totter to their feet. Master Sherwin, says Winifred, unable to quell her trembling. Why? You used us, growls Berwin, narrowing his eyes at Sherwin. Your actions betray everything the Order stands for, spits Hedwin. Sherwin does not dispute the accusations. On the contrary, he confirms them. Everything I've done, including using you, is to purge this world of that medicine. Sherwin returns his concentration to the right. You race towards Sherwin to stop the right, but then Winifred blocks your way. Winifred puts out her arm. You're not strong enough to stop him. He's one of the strongest among the Ivory Order's ranks, she says. Still, says Melanie, Batting Winifred's hand out of the way, we have to do something. Let us help. Sherwin pivots to face you, snarling. I will crush any who dare stand in my way. Sherwin attacks. It'll take more than numbers to win here.
Sherwin, bloodied and beaten, lies sprawled across the ground. Give up already, you say? Then, from the folds of his cloak, Sherwin withdraws a vial of dragon tear. So it has come to this, he murmurs, before gulping it down. Sherwin's body begins morphing into something grotesque. You hear a voice echoing in your head. A lifeless world. A deathless world. This fetid plain will be purged so that it gleams pure white once more. I, the Oasis Wind, will make sure of it. Combine their magic for an all powerful strike. The brunt of the blow renders the Oishis Wind motionless. But in your head echoes a familiar voice. There is no denying me. This world will fall, as will you. The Oishis Wind stirs. Stretching his humongous wings. Their power depleted, Winifred and company retreat from the fort. The Oishis wind screeches a bloodthirsty shriek as he bears down on you once again.
creatures be cleansed by my power. The Awicious Wind's power inhibits your actions. The Awicious Wind gathers his immense strength. You have to do something. The Awicious Wind's power binds you. Struggling against his power, Melanie recalls Vince's final words. Your spell can make this world a better place. Through everything, realization strikes her. The only way out of this is to use forbidden magic. I offer myself body and soul as payment. Melanie recites the spell, then turns to you. I'm sorry, she says, her voice faint. You'll have to finish what you started without me. Melanie's powerful magic has bound the Awicious Win. That same power, though, has also bound her. Drained from casting the spell, Melanie collapses to the ground. Her spell breaks the power binding you. You can move freely again and feel your strength return. The spell has bound the Awicious Wind. Now's your chance to end this. Give it all you got. You defeated the Awicious Win. Sherwin, returned to his human form, seems not long for this world. You rush to Melanie's side. The moment you reach her, you notice something strange. Mm -hmm. 
Melanie's transformed into a monster. Just then, Winifred and the others return from their search of the area. It seems the emergency stores of Dragon Tear kept in the altar were all dashed upon the ground during your battle with Sherwin. Despair buckles your knees. You've lost Melanie and any hope of changing Mar back. Winifred slips something into your hand. You hold it up. And see the empty vial of Dragon Tear that Sherwin drank. But if you squint, you can make out one last drop in the bottom. You got a vial of Dragon Tear from Winifred. The world, cut off from its supply of medicine with the dragon's death. Your twin, for whom you have searched high and low for some way of restoring her human form. And Melanie, transformed into a monster and lying prone before your very eyes. You must decide for which purpose to put the all-powerful dragon tear. You tip the dragon tear over Melanie's prone form. Melanie turns back into a human. When she learns you used the dragon tear on her, Melanie asks you why you didn't choose Mar. You shouldn't have used the last dragon tear on me, she sobs. After escaping the mausoleum, you take Melanie and Mar with you on another sojourn round the realm. Melanie is as unforgiving toward you as always, but grows especially tender in taking care of Mar. Deep, deep down, she feels guilty that only she returned to normal. Afterwards, News of the dragon's imprisonment at the hands of the Ivory Order and the medicine they forced him to make spreads like wildfire. A rash of skirmishes breaks out over the increasingly rarer medicine that is the dragon's legacy. Chaos envelops the realm. <laughs> 